My story begins 24 years ago in the big metropolitan city of São Paulo. I was born to a loving middle-class Brazilian family who expected me to live with them forever. But I've always had an experimental life, and that took me on a very different journey, from Brazil to Boston to Silicon Valley, where I became a technology entrepreneur and an author. As long as I can remember, I've always loved creating things, and to be honest, sometimes destroying them. My parents worried a bit that I would spend my weekends reading things like motherboards for dummies and how to build their own R2D2 robot. As I was preparing to apply for ITA, one of the top colleges in Brazil, one of my high school professors posed me a question: "Have you heard about MIT?" Little did he know he was about to turn my life upside down. I had no clue how the application process worked, but I soon learned that I only had two weeks to prepare. And to make things a little harder, the deadlines had passed to interview with an MIT alum and to sign up for the SATs, a test I had never heard of. What could I do? First, I found the address of an MIT alum living in São Paulo and decided to show up in his house. He was very nice, but he said, "Darling, you're too late. In fact, a couple of months late." Um, and then I said, "Just look at me for a second." And then he realized I was holding this big brown box in my hand, and he got curious, "What is that box?" And I said, "I brought my life and my heart to this interview. Please give me five minutes to tell you how I'm going to use the MIT education to make the world a better place." And then I started to show him science fair certificates, video games ideas I had sketched, sports trophies. He smiled and let me in. I had won the battle, but the war was still far away. I couldn't sign up for the SATs, so again I decided to show up on the day of the exam. The lady running the test was clear: rules are rules. Your name is not on the list. You have to leave, and she escorted me out. But I couldn't let that happen. So I decided to silently follow her back in, and I told her, "I'm so sorry, but I can't leave. I need to see with my own eyes that everyone is taking their exams." So they let me wait by the door, and I saw everyone come in and take their seats. Every seat was taken, but one. That became my seat. <laughs> Then it would be three months until MIT would announce the results. That day I was with my mother in front of the computer, frenetically pressing the refresh button. And yeah, it's cheesy. Kelly Clarkson was singing on the background. You know that song, "I'll spread my wings and I'll learn how to fly." Very timely. And then the impossible happened. I was admitted to class of 2010. Since. Since that day, I can no longer tell what is reality and what is a dream. Over the past six years, a hurricane of ideas happened, from dreaming up low-cost phones in Mozambique and better water distribution in Ghana, to working at startups, Google Translate, and in open-source projects at Microsoft, to my own startup, Lemon, which allows people to create digital replicas of their wallets. Looking back at how much taking chances has shaped me, I decided to do an experiment. I'm not a writer, but I decided to put those lessons and publish a free electronic book about entrepreneurship. I called it "A Menina do Vale," the girl from Silicon Valley, how entrepreneurship can change your life. I published it last month in Brazil, and the results blew me away. In less than a month, over half a million people downloaded the book. This was one experiment, but it was one experiment after the other that led me to this moment. One of the biggest lessons I've learned is explore, explore, explore. Because the most transformative moments in life are beyond imagination. Thank you.